So now I'd like to show one of the newer, newest features in this particular oscilloscope, and that is the onboard web page. So in order to get that, the first thing we need to do is connect the oscilloscope up to a network. In this case, we're hardwired. Uh, we also do have a Wi-Fi connection capability or option. Uh, but in this case, we're hardwired into the local network. We've got our laptop connected to the local network as well. And we're going to go, we're going to get the IP address first. So we go to utility, we've got IO, and we've got IP set. So we're going to take a look at the IP set. In this case, we're going to use DHCP on. That's going to automatically assign an open IP address to the instrument. Here we've got an IP address of 192, 168, 1, 139. So I'm going to go over to the laptop. I'm going to open up a browser. In this case, I'm using Google Chrome. And I just typed in 192.168.1.139. And you'll see that we have a nice web page showing the exact screen on the oscilloscope. This is helpful instead of opening another program to operate the oscilloscope. Now we can just use the web browser without having to add any software to our computer. It's already here. Once we get that LAN connection to the instrument, we have direct access to all of the controls. Uh, here we've got the horizontal section, uh, so you can set the horizontal scale as well as the delay. Acquire, we can select different acquisition modes. We can uh, configure everything on the oscilloscope that we could do from the front panel. We can also do remotely through this web browser interface. And we can also do version updates. We can update the firmware. We can do screen refresh, uh, which is going to update the screen here. I'm just going to turn this or take the scope off of that uh, and go back over to a mode where we're actually acquiring data. Uh, I'm going to do a screen refresh. And we're going to see that we're actually getting a screen refresh here. Uh, because of the latency of the internet, we're not getting a direct real-time, uh, it doesn't look exactly, it's not updating as quickly as the display on the oscilloscope, but we are getting packets of information across. And then we can also save that data as a uh, bitmap or another format. Uh, we can also add measurement capabilities. So again, full remote control of the oscilloscope over the LAN without installing any software. We simply have to have the IP address of the oscilloscope hooked up to a local network. Again, open up a computer with a browser, uh, type in that IP address, and now we have full control over the oscilloscope as well as data collection. Uh, we can go to defaults, auto setups, um, again, full control. We can also do skippy commands. So you could take the programming manual for this particular instrument, and you can test a sequence of commands to make sure that they configure the oscilloscope properly. And this way you can sequence your tests before you even go to develop your own code, which can be helpful when you go to uh, when you go to develop your own code platform. It's nice to have uh, short chunks that do, uh, where you're sending small command sets to the instrument in order to troubleshoot the, um, in order to troubleshoot that particular sequence of events that you want to occur in a way uh, for the, for the scope. And then let's go back uh, to the control panel. We can also switch on channels. So in this case, we've turned on channel two. So with the web control, we type in the IP address here, we've got 192.168.1.139, which is what we received from the uh, DHCP mode on the oscilloscope. Once we type that into the browser window and hit enter, we're going to load up the display of the oscilloscope uh, from this particular screen. So this is a web browser based uh, acquisition and control for the oscilloscope. So we're actually piped into the oscilloscope using the LAN connection. And this allows us to then communicate with the oscilloscope without adding any software to our PC. So anybody with a LAN connection, as long as the scope is on the network and we know the IP address, and we are allowed to be able to go, uh, uh, you know, physically allowed to go to that particular network, we can drill into that scope and collect the data. Here we've got a screenshot. We can hit screen refresh, which is going to update that screen image uh, with the latest display information from the oscilloscope. So we can select different channels. We can change the persistence setting. So all of the front panel controls we have on the oscilloscope are now directly applicable or directly controllable using the web browser control. And again, we didn't have to add any software. We just went to Google Chrome in this case. We also have a Skippy command line. Uh, we can take the programming manual from the instrument. We can type in a particular command set. And I'm just going to zoom into that a little bit differently. So here we could type in a Skippy command. Uh, Commons is IDN or identification string. And we can send that, uh, hit execute. I think we could actually sequence a number of events here. So we could take the programming manual. We can sequence all of our Skippy commands. And then we can execute them to see if that sequence of commands does the correct operation while we're in front of the instrument. Um, 
And we can also make some other changes that aren't directly applicable to, um, <coughs> sorry, that aren't directly controlled by the software. So we can go back over to the control panel. Uh, one really nice issue here, or one really nice feature here, we can go to screen refresh. It's gonna grab the latest from the oscilloscope and then we can hit save screen. I'm just gonna minimize that a little bit. Uh, we can hit save screen. That's going to take a bitmap image of everything that's on the display and it's gonna save it right in our toolbar so we can very quickly transfer images of whatever is happening on the input of the oscilloscope, transfer it directly over to our, uh, our local storage and you could send that as an email to your colleague and let them know, hey, something might be up uh, with, the, with this, particular, uh, this particular thing that we're measuring with the oscilloscope. Uh, again, we can activate different channels here. Once we've made all of the changes, it's a batch application update. So once we've configured the oscilloscope, then we can hit apply and all of those new settings will then be applied to the oscilloscope uh, remotely. In this case, we added a few different channels and we could change uh, different scaling and, and that type of thing. So really nice feature, a uh, very quick way of getting up and running from a programming standpoint or uh, maybe a remote data acquisition standpoint. Um, the oscilloscope could be on a mountaintop. As long as there's a LAN connection, we can talk to it directly with very little, uh, very little changes or very little effort in order to get that up and running.